What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another BDSP VGC video. Today I'm going to be talking about the three legendary beasts and why I think they're actually at their peak competitive value here in BDSP VGC. We've actually seen all three of these Pokemon get good usage in the non-Dynamax formats of Sword and Shield VGC, and I expect them to return uh, to non-Dynamax formats in Sword and Shield VGC if we end up getting my dream format of non-restricted Series 7, uh, but you know, that's all up in the air right now. Or, I don't know, I'm mass recording videos right now since I'm going on like a nine day trip. So for all I know, by the time I upload this, they will have already announced the new VGC format that we're gonna be playing in series 12, AKA the official format for when tournaments return. And I can be disappointed when I, you know, when I hear that in person, but for now we don't know. Anyways, if you guys enjoy this video at any point in time, learn anything, or just, you know, want to support the channel, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily BDSP VGC content, answer my comment question of the day, which of the three legendary beasts do you think is the best, and also be sure to check out my Discord community and my Patreon if you want to support or just keep up with the channel. I've started a new series on my Patreon where I use viewer-suggested Pokemon and build around them, but let's go ahead and get into this video. So... Why are this? Sorry, for some reason I thought I wasn't recording. I was like looking at OBS and I was like, why isn't it recording? It is. Uh, so why are the three legendary beasts at peak competitive value? Well, the three legendary beasts actually all have access to their hidden abilities in this game naturally. In fact, they don't have access to pressure, which is kind of funny. But their hidden abilities are something that they have access to, which is a huge buff for them. The fact that they can't flinch is actually really huge in VGC. It might not be as big in like singles, but in VGC, it makes all the difference since Pokemon like Hitmontop, Pokemon like Smeargle, fake out users all over the place really, really love being able to go for that um, against Pokemon that are generally supportive or are just major threats, which obviously as fast, powerful Pokemon like these are, uh, they're generally gonna be fake out targets. On top of that, Inner Focus also makes Pokemon like Entei uh, immune to Intimidate, which means that Entei, which is a fire type, can not only avoid Intimidate altogether, but can avoid Burn as well. So lowering this thing's attack stat is exclusively relegated to like Parting Shot, and that's it. And that's actually insane for Choice Band sets, but we'll get into that in a second. Let's start off with uh, what I think are the two most important Pokemon in the current format, and then we'll get into Entei, which I think is a super underrated threat right now. So Suicune is a super bulky Pokemon. It's pure water type in a format that has a lot of really good water types, to be honest. If we actually look at um, water types in BDSP, uh, we see that Rotom Wash is highest in usage, Ludicolo is a close second, Polito, Gastron, Azumaro, Pelipper, Kingdra, Gyarados, Milotic, and then Suicune. So why do I think Suicune, which is like a borderline within unviable usage range. Why do I think it's viable? Well, I think it's just generally underrated. Uh, Suicune in like the entire format actually has a lot of favorable uh, matchups. It hard walls Cresselia because of how special defensive it is and the fact that it can run uh, Snarl. Uh, it is able to eat hits from Togekiss with a special defensive set. Even if it's taking crits, it eats it very well. And you can 100% three shot this thing with an ice beam. Garchomp hates facing this thing because of how physically bulky it is with 100 HP and 115 base defense. Like on both defensive sides, it takes hits super well. And it hates having to switch in on Scalds, which might burn it, and Ice Beams, which can outright KO it if you're running a modest set. Arcanine does like nothing to this, it just gets destroyed in the long run. Not immediately, because you're not doing too much with Scald, you're doing a lot because it's super effective, but uh, you're not doing like, you know, one hit KO damage, but still. But I think what is most important in this format are its matchups versus Tyranitar and Scizor in particular. Now, Scizor obviously is what I've said in the past uh, to be the best Pokemon in the entire format, not reflected by its usage, unfortunately, since Cresselia is still higher for some reason. Um, it's able to Swords Dance and deal a lot of damage to many different Pokemon in the format. It bullet punches Togekiss, Garchomp, Tyranitar, uh, it X-Scissors Cresselia, it X-Scissors Rotom Wash. It like is able to two hit KO, if not Oko, a lot of things at plus two. And while if you don't build this thing physically bulky enough, you know, if you don't put enough into defense, um, it could technically two hit KO you with a Swords Dance x -Scissor. This thing is just so bulky that you have a lot of opportunities to deal with it. You can Scald Burn it, you can just hard wall it if it isn't running x -Scissor for some reason, which is something that I've encountered. Some people are running U-Turn. Um, but generally speaking, Suicune is just able to wall that Pokemon out. And versus Titar, which is seeing a lot of usage recently. In fact, I think it was like one of the most used Pokemon in the recent um, Victory Road tournaments. 
it can just destroy T-Tar. There's no weakness policy, so there's absolutely no threat of you activating it. You can go for Scalds and just get burns off on it. And yeah, Lumberry is the number one most used item, but versus T-Tar, you're taking very little from its physical move since while it has 130 attack, Rock Slide is its most commonly run attack and it isn't doing that much to uh, Suicune given how bulky it is. And you're just able to like hard wall it and that's really big. Just the amount of things that Suicune can shut down in this format is is really an, is really like big. Hitmontop hates facing it. Um, Azumarill obviously can like set up on it, but if you get a burn, it's not gonna enjoy that matchup. Uh, really, the only thing it doesn't like is like Ludicolo and Rain. And even then, you're guaranteed to be able to take at least one Giga Drain uh, or Energy Ball, and you can go for your own Tailwind, support your team, or even just calm mind up on it and try to um, try to just out set up it and deal with it in the long run with Ice Beam. So Suicune is just a super flexible Pokemon that can fit in a lot of teams. It can run many different sets. I just chose two from Picolytics uh, to showcase this. Obviously, you're, you have access to like Tailwind, which is really big. Very few good Pokemon have Tailwind in this format. It's pretty much just like Murkrow, Latias, Latios, uh, Crobat, and Suicune. Like those are the ones that we see the most. Um, and just the ability to set up and deal major damage is really, really big. Obviously, you can also run Snarl instead of Calm Mind. Um, I would recommend you actually run Snarl and Tailwind just because that combination shuts down. It shuts down a lot of things. It makes it so um, you deal, you know, you're able to like not deal with Gastrodon, but you're able to actually hit it with a move that inhibits it in some way. Um, you're able to uh, shut down Ludicolo's damage. Uh, you're able to undo like a Rotom Wash nasty plot uh, in a turn or two, especially if you set up a Tailwind, it makes it easier. And you also just straight up wall Latios in a lot of situations. So yeah, like it's it's a super versatile Pokemon that I think deserves a lot more usage than it's getting right now. Um, I think the only other Pokemon that's kind of like this that I think needs a lot more usage is going to be Milotic, which uh, if... I released the video before or after this. You might have already heard my opinions on Milotic, um, but if not, Milotic video coming soon. I think it's like one of the best water types ever. Anyways, next up we have Raikou. Once again, Inner Focus is the hidden ability. Greatest buff you could have given this thing. Regieleki doesn't exist, so we have Regieleki 2.0, I guess? Regieleki Alpha version? Like pre-release, something like that? Anyways, you can't flinch this thing and it has access to a lot of amazing support tools. I actually recently released a uh, Manectric video and in that video I said Manectric is sort of the weird love child between Raichu and Raikou. Now, the Raikou element is what matters most in my opinion. It has access to... Um, Raikou itself has access to a lot of really good support tools like uh, dual screens and snarl, and that's really all you're running it for. It's high speed and inability to be flinched means that uh, outspeeding things in the format that are really popular that could counter it like Garchomp um, or really just Garchomp, like actually now that I'm looking at it, there are very few Pokemon that can actually just straight up deal with um, Raikou on their own because Garchomp has like a monopoly on ground types right now. Uh, but the fact that you outspeed it means that you can safely go for a reflect, which will allow you to easily tank an earthquake. Um, and with light clay, you're going to have that up for pretty much the rest of the game, considering the pace at which VGC games go. And then you can just volt switch on uh, Garchomp's partner or just hard switch out. Uh, and your team just gets that reflect for the rest of the game. And if you don't face off against a Garchomp immediately, you can get off whatever screens necessary. Let's say you're facing off against the scissor. Get that free reflect. You're able to eat like a bullet punch. You're able to eat like an X scissor and it makes it a lot easier to deal with it. Let's say you're against a Rotom Wash. Set up that uh, light screen and then go for a snarl. Even volt switch on it. There are a lot of different things it can do. I think the only thing it really misses is Electroweb, which is a, a move that actually I don't think anything in this game gets. If it had Electroweb, that'd be huge, but just the pivoting ability and the fact that this thing can, um, you know, without fail pretty much every time get off a reflector or a light screen because it's one of the fastest Pokemon in the format and because it's like just unflinchable. It just makes it so reliable and such a good tool on your team. On top of that, like I said, there are a lot of really good water types in this format. If we take a look, um, while a lot of them actually take neutral uh, damage from Raikou, it's still good consistent damage overall to have an electric type on your team. You can hit Ludicolo for some decent damage as well as Snarl it out. Uh, you can hit Politoed for super effective. Azumarill doesn't like facing Raikou at all because of screens and the fact that it can probably put you in range where you can't belly drum anymore. Pelipper gets annihilated. Kingdra hates facing Raikou because you're able to go for Snarl and Light Screen, and Gyarados hates the matchup entirely. Suicune doesn't appreciate it, uh, but it can probably deal with it, and Milotic doesn't like it either, unless you switch in on a Snarl, in which case Milotic is going to destroy you. But yeah, no, Raikou is amazing. Um, I, I had two sets for each of these. Honestly, most of the time you're going to be running Raikou as 
<laughs> as like just a super supportive electro type, but it's also like the fastest electro type we have access to right now, I believe. I might be wrong. Let me actually double check that. Battle Festival doubles at Pokemon, uh, electric and speed, electrode and Jolteon. I forgot they're faster, but they aren't quite as good on the support side. So yeah, Raikou is like the most viable fast electro type we have right now, which is really big for it. Um, which means that you can also go ahead and just run an offensive set. This is a choice specs, Raikou. Like I said, you can't actually flinch this thing, and it has really decent coverage now that they gave it Scald as a TM move, which is crazy. I never expected Raikou of all Pokemon to get Scald. Um, it's an electric beast. I don't know where the water comes from. Maybe it, like, had Mountain Dew right before the match, and it's just spitting it back up. I don't know. Anyways, so Raikou is unable to be flinched, and it has a decent special attack stat at 115 and a pretty good speed stat at 115, which means on lead, if you're, like, running a rain team, let's say that there's, like, a Gyarados in front of you. Oh, no, Gyarados in front of my Pokemon. I am probably going to scare them out anyways with a, you know, with the threat of an electric move. So they're going to switch into something that takes it neutrally or resists it. Well, guess what? We're in the rain, meaning I have 100% accurate thunder and I'm choice specs and this is a stab move. So even though you're resisting it, you're not really resisting it. You're taking it kind of roughly. Like it's not going to be a move that this thing wants to take regardless of what comes in. You know, unless it's like a ground type. On top of that, um, if it is a ground type, you can make that call. You can go for Choice Spec Scald. You can even go for a Shadow Ball versus Pokemon like Cresselia and deal pretty decent damage versus it uh, since you're running Choice Specs. So yeah, like Raikou as an offensive Pokemon, I think is also kind of underexplored. It's very basic and I think that Raikou gets most of its value from being a support electric type, but it's still an option that's left on the table if you want to try it out. So yeah, Raikou, honestly, really, really solid this format. I have a couple of teams with it. I don't know if I've uploaded the Latias video yet, but it's on my Latias team and it's uh, really nice. Finally, Entei. Uh, Entei is arguably the most underrated Pokemon of all of these three. Here's a thing that we have in this current format. We have like very few really good fire types and people are just sleeping on Entei right now. Entei is only at 4% usage and for some reason Tyranitar is a fire type along with Salamence. I guess these things just run fire moves. Anyways, um, yeah, as far as fire types go, this thing's super underrated. I see no reason for Heatran to be above this thing. I see no reason for Inferno to be above this thing. Rotom Heat, fine. But Entei? Dude, you can't lower its attack stat the majority of ways that you would want to lower its attack stat, and it has 100 base speed. The only thing it doesn't outspeed are, like, Pokemon that it kind of doesn't care about and Garchomp. And Garchomp's, like, the biggest issue of the three, and even then, you can just choice band extreme speed it and deal a lot of damage. I have been using Entei on my... Uh, Manectric team to help deal with opposing rain teams. That is a testament as to how solid Entei is as a choice bander, because guess what? Entei should lose to rain teams, but if you chip the Ludicolo, it's in range of extreme speed. And there's very few things they can do about it. Can't flinch it, can't intimidate it. It's just a solid Pokemon. The speed tiers dropping overall in BDSP have made Entei much more threatening than people give it credit for. It's literally just the amount of Garchomp spam that kind of makes it a little bit eh. But the fact that Scizor exists too, and that, you know, rain, it's its just rain and Garchomp, right? But everything else in the format doesn't like it. Like, if we look at what's being used. Cresselia, Choice Band, uh, Choice Band and Sacred Fire, it's like a three hit KO. And if you get a burn, it just makes it even easier. Tokus, it's like a two hit KO. Garchomp, if you, you know, if it switches in on it and gets burned, you can easily take a hit. Arcanine, whatever. Scizor, O-Code. Tyranitar, yeah, fair. You know, I can deal with it. Rotom Wash, fair. Heatran, fair, but like everything below there, like the average Pokemon, it just doesn't like taking a choice banded Sacred Fire. Regardless of what it is, it just has to eat that hit and it isn't comfortable taking it. It could use more coverage. I don't know if it still gets Stomping Tantrum. It doesn't, so it's like ground coverage is super, super limited, but it still gets really good moves. Like Crunch is fine, is like just a move you can slap on. But overall, yeah, just like Entei as a Pokemon is really solid and I think people are kind of underrating it right now. Also, if you want to use an alternative set, Choice Scarf Eruption on the Sun team, but Sun's kind of garbage right now, so I wouldn't really recommend it. So, yeah. Uh, obviously, yeah, Entei isn't as easy to slap onto a team as Arcanine or Rotom Heat, but just the fact that Entei is, like, one of the most consistent high damage output Pokemon in the format is honestly reason enough to find a place for it on your team, in my opinion. But yeah, uh, that's my opinion on the three legendary beasts. I personally would rank them Raikou as most... Uh, viable, Suicune is second most viable, and Entei is least viable, but Entei being least viable out of these three is like saying it's it got third at the Olympics. Like, it is 
a great Pokemon. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about the Legendary Beast in the comment section down below. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like in the video. All of that helps support the channel more than you could ever imagine. I really appreciate all your support, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.